So unless you have been living under a complete rock in the past few months, it's pretty clear that getting a tech job has been pretty hard recently. Layoffs have been at record levels. AI is coming in, which is understandably prompting many people to ask, is coding even a good career anymore? So while it's very easy to see the headlines and get emotional, I think it's always very important to stay rational. So in this video, I want to give my very honest and sort of thought out logical explanation for whether coding is still a worthwhile career to get into because obviously over the past two years we've sort of gone through this coding gold rush where everyone was getting into coding because it seemed like the easiest way for literally anyone to just make six figures straight out of university or even without a university degree at all so while it's not as easy as it was in the past let's see what is the state of the coding industry today and whether there are other industries that might be a better opportunity today but before we probably talk about all of that let me just tell you one thing. If you want to learn to code and this is the career that you want to get into, you should absolutely still learn to code. And I'm going to tell you why, because it's not necessarily easy to see, because it's easy to get sort of lost in the weight of this like news, this like doomsayers, like all these kind of things. But really, like when you zoom out in the big picture, the real question I want you to ask yourself, if you're considering quitting because of like all these things that you're hearing, what are you going to do instead? Really think about it. Like, answer that question what are you going to do instead that doesn't have the same downsides that the tech industry has right now of it being difficult to get in and it potentially being harmed by ai which again we'll talk about that in more detail later i've worked in a couple of industries in my career basically before i discovered tech then the, that was the career that i wanted to get into i worked in banking i worked in consulting i did a few other things and let me just tell you that in all of those industries it's just as hard if not harder in general to get in so if you quit coding to do something different you will probably find that either the pay there is going to be significantly lower and or that it's going to be just as hard to get in you're going to have to learn potentially even more like something like banking consulting law these other like high paying industries you're absolutely gonna need the degree for those kind of industries whereas for tech while it obviously helps you don't even need it so the biggest problems you're gonna face if you're trying to break into tech is that number one you don't have the real world skills that you actually need number two you have a terrible resume that is terribly formatted that if you're sending it to a company they're just gonna assume you're terrible because the resume doesn't show that you know how to highlight your skills in the proper way and number three you don't have access to employers most difficult part about breaking into the industry right now is that these companies is getting so many applications so if you're just sending out applications via linkedin or something like that it's really really hard to stand out because they're probably not even gonna get to your application and so before we move on into discussing a bit more about the tech industry i wanted to tell you what is actually the best and fastest and easiest way for you to actually get a job in tech right now and that is going to be something called course careers so first you will go through a fundamental software engineering curriculum that is taught by tech with tim then you can choose a specialization based on what you want to specialize on like for example front-end back-end devops and all of these specializations are taught by actual real world experts like for example web dev simplified for the front-end one and course careers outside of providing this course for you they have created this full employer portal where employers are going to go in and have a pool of essentially fully pre-qualified candidates who have passed the course careers curriculum which means that people like max for example went through course careers landed a 70k tech job without even applying for a single job himself because he was just approached by employees directly from the course careers platform and throughout this process you're going to get unlimited mentoring from people who have actually done it from people who have worked the jobs that you want to work and because i'm an official partner of course careers i'm actually going to be offering my services as well for this mentoring so you can just pick me and have me help you essentially and at the end of it they're just going to make a resume for you you just have to plug into some information and they're going to just spit out a fully optimized resume for you and then at the end of that you get access to their employer portal where you get direct access to employers in a way that you simply cannot get anywhere else so if you're interested what they offer is a free introductory course of software development which you can get started with down below by clicking on my link in the description of course you still have to do the work of going through the program and actually taking this seriously but if you do, they have an entire company whose only goal is to help you get a job as fast as possible. So go check out that free introductory course down below in the description. And after that, you can decide if this is the right path for you. So I feel like most people don't quite 
know the fundamental reason why it's so hard to get a tech job right now. And once we understand this, it becomes easy to see that this is not a permanent thing, but it's actually just a temporary thing and the jobs will come back eventually. So to understand this, we need to look at two graphs, which I have drawn for you with my amazing drawing skills. Really, it's just one graph that is represented in two ways. And it's this one. We have interest rates and we have hiring. So when interest rates go up, hiring goes down. Interest rates up, hiring down. Okay, why does this happen? When interest rates go up, that means that for a company to borrow money to, or to access funding, it's gonna be more expensive because interest rates are the price of money. Why is this important? Well, it's important because for companies and especially tech companies, one of their biggest expenses is going to be employees. So when money is expensive, so when it's more difficult to get funding, they're going to be hiring less people. Oversimplification, but that's broadly how it works. Now, why is this such a big deal, especially in tech compared to other industries? Well, if you compare a tech company that builds an app of some kind to, let's say, a boots on the ground restaurant, a restaurant obviously also has employees, just like the tech company, but the restaurant is gonna have a ton of other costs as well, like rent, the cost of the food that they're buying. Whereas for a tech company, especially like a startup, 95% of their cost is usually going to be employees. It's going to be engineers because engineers are pretty freaking expensive. For tech companies specifically, the first place and pretty much the only place for them to cut down on costs is going to be employees. And for a restaurant as well, if their restaurant wants to keep operating at all, they cannot really fire all of their waiters because then they just can't run the restaurant at all. Whereas for a tech company, a specific feature of a tech product, like an app, software, website, whatever, is that it can keep running with far fewer engineers than it took to build the thing. What does this mean? Well, it means that when hiring is cheap, so when it's easy to get access money, what tech companies are gonna do is hire a ton of engineers to build a ton of new features so that then when hiring becomes expensive, so when money becomes expensive, they can get rid of all those engineers who already now built the features because it takes a lot less engineers to maintain the features and to maintain the company than it takes to build them, which is why the tech industry tends to be extremely cyclical in this kind of way. So when interest rates go up, hiring goes down. So that is the core reason why there are so many layoffs right now. What does this mean? Well, it means that once interest rates go down again, which will happen soon, like no one knows how soon it's gonna happen, but most likely it's gonna be within the next few years at the latest, could even be like next year, who knows? It really depends on the economy. So we need to pray to Jerome Powell or whoever the banking heads are to do that sooner than later. But the jobs will come back. If you look at the historical graphs of the interest rate and you match that with the historical graph of hiring and layoffs, it will match pretty well. Now, what about the people who are talking about, oh, AI is coming to take our jobs, etc. Now, look, if we get to a day when AI takes away programming jobs, the world that we would have to be living in at the time is so different to the world that we live in today is that you not having a tech job is probably gonna be the least of your problems because if tech jobs are taken away, literally almost every other job besides like physical jobs like building buildings would have been taken away as well. The point is that a reality where AI has taken away programming jobs is a reality that we cannot really predict. Like it is such a different reality anyway that there's really no point basing your decisions based on that potential outcome, which leads us back to sort of square one of just asking yourself, what do you actually want to do? Do you want to get into coding? Do you want to get into banking? Do you want to get into law? Whatever you actually think you would want to stick to for the next 10 years, that is what you should do. So let's go back to looking at the tech industry and fundamentally comparing it to the other high paying industry. Obviously there's a million industries in the world, but a big part of why people get into tech is because it's so high paying. Coding is one of the very few fields in the world where just with a nine to five job, you can build some serious wealth if you stick to it and you climb the ladder. The other careers where you can do that, banking, law, consulting, they all require you to work like 12 hour days. Like seriously, I worked for one of the biggest consulting firms in the world and it was the worst thing in the world. I had to work for literally from nine to nine every single day and that was like a non-normal day, not even a busy day. With tech, 
you can make this kind of money while just working nine to five. You won't see this in any other industry. Again, as someone who's done this, I've been a software engineer, I've been a banker, I've been a consultant. The work of a software engineer is so much more chill compared to these other high paying industries. As a consultant, you're always working. You're always got meetings on your calendar. You've got these stressed out bosses that are screaming down your neck. As a software engineer, you're just sitting there with your laptop. You've got some bug that you have to solve today. Like, well, I'm not saying it's an easy job, but comparatively speaking to the other industries where you can make the kind of money you can make in tech is a very freaking easy job because you also have a lot of work-life balance, which gives you time for life, if that's what you're into, or like a side hustle or something like that. I literally ran this YouTube channel with like full-time work hours while I was working my nine to five software engineering job because I had the time for it. I would not have had the time for it if I was an investment banker. But of course, it's not a perfect career. No career is, there's going to be cons. The obvious con is if you don't like coding, don't get into coding. That's really what all of this comes down to. Do you want to code or do you want to make PowerPoint slides? Do you want to do Excel? Do you want to sell real estate? What do you want to do? That is what you should do. But a few things to consider about being a software engineer is that number one, as a junior developer, the kinds of things you'll be doing are probably not as exciting as you think they will be. Like I had a lot more excitement building all of my own coding projects when I was learning to code myself and the catch-up projects that I now build on my own than I ever did for the corporate job that I had. That's why I left my corporate job quite early because I wanted to do something more exciting, which is why I went to building my startup and that's a whole another story. But if you're looking for something very like high pace, exciting, something where you're building big things, as a junior, you're probably not gonna be doing that. You're gonna be doing stuff like configuring some files, you're gonna be fixing some minor bugs, things like this. So just understand that. And the other con is that it's not the most social job in the world. Software engineers tend to be the kinds of people that just wanna sort of stick to themselves. Like I remember when I was working my job, we had these daily stand-up meetings. Like out of 20 people in the meeting, maybe two people, including me, would turn on their camera. Like they're literally colleagues that I worked with that I still to this day, I don't know what they look like because it was a remote job and no one would turn on their camera. And it's just not the most social kind of environment. Maybe I was just unlucky, obviously it depends on the company, everything like that. But I had this colleague of mine who I was really close to and she was an extremely social person and she had transitioned from being a consultant to a software engineer and she wanted to go back from being a software engineer to a consultant specifically because she didn't like just how unsocial the job can be. So that is something to definitely consider. But barring those two things, it's a pretty great career still. And you shouldn't let these short-term fluctuations in the economy determine what you do. Do what you wanna do. If you like coding, you should learn it and don't overthink it. But just understand that right now, it is a bit more difficult, but the jobs will eventually come back. It is just unfortunate that we are in a bad economy right now. And specifically today, it is simply not enough anymore to just learn basic HTML and get an amazing job. You can get an amazing job pretty quickly, but you need to learn a bit more than you would have in the past. Obviously, if you go through a program <laughs> like Course Careers, they're gonna give you all of it and they're gonna help you get that job after that. If you don't wanna do that, that is completely fine as well, but that is going to be your fastest way to do that. So like I said before, if you're interested in checking that out and you want the fastest way to break into the industry, like many people who have gone through their program including some of you guys are now doing, then you can check out the free course careers introductory course down below in the description, which is gonna give you a bunch of info about the industry beyond what I talked about here. So you can continue from this video by at least watching that mini course. And then if you decide to move forward, you can do that. And remember with my link, you get $50 off. So go check that out. Thank you for watching the video. Keep coding. I'll see you in the next one.